Welcome to the Freedom Project podcast. The Freedom Project exists to make freedom in Christ known to each and every person we can reach and to encourage and dialogue with those who have already found freedom in Christ. Your host is Joe Weaver. Hello, friends. I'd like to welcome you today to the Freedom Project. I'm Joe Weaver. So happy to be able to spend some time with you today here at the uh, Vanier uh, Church where we have our broadcast center. I'd like to just uh, sit down with you guys today and talk a little bit about freedom. At the Freedom Project, we like to uh, think about how freedom looks in our lives, in our day-to-day lives. You know, we all live in uncertain and unpredictable times. But we do have a certain and a predictable truth that runs like a thread through our Bible from Genesis to Revelation. That's the promise of freedom, freedom in Christ. So we wanna take a look and talk to some people and see how that freedom looks in their lives. My guest today is Steve Prendergast. Welcome, Steve. Great to be here, Joe. Thanks for having me. Thanks for being here. Um, Steve and I have uh, known each other for a little while, but I'm getting to know Steve better. And uh, Steve, why don't you just uh, give our audience uh, a little insight into your life, where you are today, and okay. and uh, what things are passionate for you, and mm-hmm. what things are going on with you lately. Yeah. Well, I'm uh, first and foremost. I like to say I'm a Christ follower. I'm a husband, father of four. I have two beautiful grandchildren. My passion is riding Harley's. Love riding. Uh, I'm also into tropical fish. I just love aquariums and ponds and stuff like that. And uh, I'm the current development officer for Teen Challenge, which will be uh, in Renfrew, which will be our newest men's center that I mm. moved up here to get up and running. So, yeah. So I sometimes uh, go for a drive with the dog in the car. It must be hard to take the fish on the Harley, though, eh? It is. I've uh, <laughs> tried it once or twice. It doesn't work out so well for the fish. You, uh, you mentioned that you're with Teen Challenge. Mm-hmm. Um, tell us a little bit about Teen Challenge. You know, we all have... Uh, journey in our lives that we take it's seldom it's linear or it's very seldom linear and and uh, i know that lots of times in our life we end up in places that we never imagined that we would be so Mm -hmm. give us a little bit of a overview uh, about teen challenge okay so teen challenge is uh, a 12-month in residence drug and alcohol treatment program that's christ-centered christ-focused Uh, Our organization is global. Uh, It started with one center in Brooklyn, New York with uh, David Wilkerson and Nikki Cruz, if you're familiar with the cross and the switchblade story. And uh, today there are over 1400 centers worldwide in 125 different countries. I work for Teen Challenge Canada, which currently has five functioning men's centers and three women's centers and our center in Renfrew will be the sixth when we get our doors open. Right. So, uh, you know, Steve, at at the risk of insulting you, you don't really look like a teen to me. (laughs) So uh, can you explain to us a little bit about that aspect of Teen Challenge? Absolutely. So Teen Challenge was originally started for street kids in, in New York City, and it just blossomed. And in the late 70s, they realized there was more of a need. Now, coming into Canada, to have an in-residence program, uh, our government legislated that you couldn't have an in-residence program for anyone 17 and under. So Teen Challenge Canada is 18 and older. We've actually had graduates as, as old as 68 years old. So it's it's never too late, yeah. Wow. So the, the teen uh, in Teen Challenge stuck, but really we, we are adult in Teen Challenge. And it's a great point that it's never too late. Uh, it's never too late for us to find our purpose in the Lord to find the freedom that's promised to us in the Lord. And it's never too late for us to take those steps into a place where he can use us, where we can be useful to his purposes. So I know that uh, when I met you, Steve, uh, it was at uh, an event where you were doing an information and fundraising booth for the house in Renfrew. This is the most recent home, I take it, in in this area. Um, How's that going? Are you set up there now or? 
So I, I was, I've moved up here for two and a half years. I've been in the Ottawa Valley now uh, raising the funds because Teen Challenge will not go into debt to start a program. So we had a $1.6 million capital campaign. We are less than a half a million dollars away from opening our doors now. And this center will house 16 men and four phase fours, which are graduates of our program that stay on uh, voluntarily. They apply for it like a job and they still live on our property. So we'll have 20 beds out there available for men that want to come and, and uh, get their lives back and, and find sobriety and uh, you know an introduction to Christ if they've never met him already. Mm -hmm. And that's really the key point. Yeah. I myself have had a history of uh, addiction and al alcoholism in my life. And I know that I've been in areas where I could find sobriety, but to find uh, a healthy sobriety in a path and a journey with the Lord is really what makes mm -hmm. the big difference in a lot of our lives. So that's awesome that you're able to do that up in uh, Renfrew. Um, it's, it's really been a, a long journey for, for you to get to this place where you're at. And I know that you have a wonderful, wonderful uh, story and testimony. Uh, I hope that everybody out here will get a chance to hear your full story sometime. Um, we're gonna get into Steve's story a little bit deeper. Uh, right now we're gonna take a sponsorship break and uh, we hope that you uh, stick with us. And, and when we come back, we're gonna talk a little bit more about Steve's personal journey. Hard partying, drug using, bike riding, party animal. That's who I was. If you were to meet me 10 years ago, wow, you would have seen one mess of a person, extreme crack addict and coke addict, lived the nightlife and slept all day. My home had become a crack house, so there was people coming in all the time just to get high. And police were visiting on a regular basis, at least once a month for the two years I lived in that house. In October, I just accomplished something that, uh, you know, I really wanted to do in life and I had succeeded at that, so I selfishly, you know, wanted to go and pick up some cocaine in my friends whose home I was visiting. They begged me not to go and, and in my mind, I was, I was sober. I mean, I had drank and drove in much worse shape. I got on my Harley and uh, 15 minutes later, I went into a little S bend and I collided with a car and it immediately removed most of my foot. Within a blink of an eye, my life was altered forever. A friend of mine had uh, just done a couple years stint in prison and uh, he came over and we were having a party at my house and he told me the biggest lie in the world when he says, hey, you know, when you do coke, you're just wasting it, man. It ain't real until you feel the steel. I tried it that day and my life was never the same since. When I was an addict, I was a functioning user which meant that I could control everything in my life, even though I still needed the drugs. When I became a junkie, that's when I lost control. The need for the drug overcame everything else. So here I am in this very low point in my life where I just wanted the world to stop and let me get off and I wheeled my car into this empty parking lot and was reflecting on all the all the poor choices I've made in my life and and how much damage I've caused to myself and to my family and 
I knew right there I did not want to live anymore. And I prepped this syringe with a lethal dose of cocaine and rolled up my sleeve and tied off. And as I was squeezing this plunger full of cocaine into my arm, it, it was like, it was, it's like, what is going on? It's like it's plugged and I'm squeezing so hard that the plunger arm is bending. And I was frustrated and angry and I punched in the roof of my car and I was screaming at the top of my lungs. And later on when I checked that syringe, it wasn't plugged at all. And when I reflect back now and look at that moment, I, I knew that God was not done with me yet, that he had something, something more for me. And he spared me that day. My mother uh, had to come and find me. My mother knew that I was really struggling and she came to tell me about this Teen Challenge program and explained a bit about it. And I didn't want anything to do with it, but uh, I knew I needed help. So she took me to her church where the Teen Challenge Choir was performing. And uh, that's, that was my first real introduction to Teen Challenge. My mother had said, you know, wait here, I gotta go do something. And two choir members came out named Marty and John and they shared their stories with me that day. And it was awesome to hear that these guys, their, their old lives mirrored my life what I was going through at that time. And I put myself on the waiting list that day to get into the Teen Challenge program. Transformation did not come overnight. You know, I, I was wrestling with myself, with the staff. I was dealing with issues of pride and guilt and shame and it, my year at Teen Challenge was a gradual thing and, and realizing, you know, the freedom in forgiveness to, to forgive others and accept forgiveness. But the hardest for me was to forgive myself for the things that I've done. And that year at Teen Challenge, I, I discovered that I didn't need to be macho Steve, that I could just be me without any drugs or alcohol. Since uh, completing the Teen Challenge program, I'm an ambassador for Teen Challenge. I'm currently at, at Bible College. I, I've met the love of my life uh, while I was there, and uh, I've been married a little over a year now, and we're expecting our first child soon. I've got that joy in here that uh, I couldn't find through the poke of a needle or at the end of a crack pipe or at the bottom of a bottle. You know, I have showed people the scars on my arms from the thousands of times I've stuck needles in them and the collapsed veins. And, you know, I just thank God for, for a ministry like Teen Challenge uh, that uh, he used to give me my life back. So welcome back to the Freedom Project. I'm so glad that you're still with us. Thanks for sticking around, Steve. It would have been hard to finish the interview without you. Uh, I'm really uh, happy to be sitting here with Steve Prendergast and talking about his journey into freedom with the Lord and out of the bondage of addictions. Uh, as I mentioned before the break, Steve has a huge testimony and I really do hope that at some point, everyone that's uh, viewing today will get a chance to hear his whole story because it's very, very edifying and encouraging. Um, so Steve, I know that it's hard in these shorter segments to, to uh, capture everything that's gone on in your life, but take some time and kind of walk us through um, your freedom story uh, from addiction, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so I, I come from a broken home or my parents split up before I was born and so my older brother was raised by my dad and I was raised by 
a, a single mom and and you know I, I went to church as a young kid you know I sang in a Baptist church choir when I was 10 and and I was baptized at 11 and went on to become a drummer of a Pentecostal church uh, when I was 14 I mean by the time I was 15 I'd read the Bible twice through but at age 16 my mom was a very strict mom she tried to protect me from the world and so it wasn't peer pressure for me what it was was curiosity I wanted to see what life was like on the other side of the fence and I stepped over that fence and I tried to I tried to point out hypocrisy within the church to justify my own hypocrisy mm -hmm. for you know becoming promiscuous to to experimenting with alcohol which quickly led to drugs all different kinds all by the time I was done high school and in the small town I grew up in in southern Ontario you know I, I was popular I was a, a good athlete uh, in wrestling especially <laughs> but the party scene in high school was it was pretty wild and crazy after high school I uh, began a career I worked for a cemetery and I was living with my dad at the time and uh, then I started a family and I had two little girls and I was raising them in a home that was fueled by drugs and alcohol and when mm -hmm. I say that I meant like it was uh, my daughter's mother and I were very open about uh, drinking uh, smoking of marijuana products uh, I unintentionally actually became a drug dealer because I was supplying friends unintentionally, from, unintentionally. <laughs> I didn't set out to say I'm gonna right. sell drugs but it's something that just yeah. happened it ruled and uh, you know friends coming to, to college and university used to come to me for stuff and I just thought I lived a very a nor I normalized everything mm -hmm. you know it was extremely the opposite of the way I grew up the way my daughters were were growing up and they seen things they shouldn't have and a friend of mine got out of prison one day and we were having a party at my house for him and he said you know what bro it ain't real till you feel the steel and we were doing cocaine and I've never judged anyone by the way they did the, you know they, they right. partook in their extracurricular activities and the, the day uh, that I stuck a needle in my arm was game over even another friend of mine said you know my nickname was graveyard because no one could remember the name Steve they go Gra graveyard that's not a good idea right and I'm like oh no and I I I loved it then the mother of my my daughters uh, she said to me she didn't want me to do it first but she seen how much I liked it and she asked me one day she said can I do that two of the worst most regrettable choices I ever did was that day I stuck a needle in my arm and the day I introduced her to that lifestyle right and that, that's what the, the life of the life of addiction does it takes those choices away from us and absolutely. it gives us regret absolutely yeah it, it's it's my family we crumbled within six months after that everything was just destroyed and we ended up separating I met a, another young woman uh, around uh, the age of 29 30 we got engaged and, and I was with her for for five years but during that time you know I was uh, fulfilling a dream of professional wrestling and and uh, to celebrate that dream back in 2003 it was October 11 2003 I got on my Harley to go pick up some cocaine after having too much to drink and I, I clipped a car and it, it took most of my foot off and I have a prosthetic leg today mm. it was a consequence of a choice I made I mean I drank and drove or did drugs and got on my bike or drove behind the wheel of a car many times and I don't say that braggingly right because all it took was one microsecond of a slight collision that basically changed the course of my life forever mm -hmm. and after that I just spiraled you know like uh, it, it, I wasn't I had to learn to walk again I had to learn to walk again and every time I click this leg on I'm reminded of that day so it's a consequence of my actions and eventually you know I'm, I'm I've got this large insurance settlement uh, for death and dismemberment that I didn't even know I had and when you've got nearly quarter million dollars in your bank and you're a drug addict it makes life very interesting and not in a good way and my I ran out of veins to puncture and I ended up getting hooked on crack cocaine my mother God bless her you know even in times when I mocked her to her face for her faith 
she never gave up on me. Mm. And in uh, September or September of of two thousand and six. She came and did an intervention, not an intervention, but she brought my, my late great aunt Linda, it's her birthday today, but she brought my late great aunt Linda with her to my house. And my house was a scary house. And here's these women, barely five feet tall. And she refuses to leave until I came to the door. And she told me about Teen Challenge. And I'm thinking in my head, what are teenagers going to talk to me about right. addiction? Yeah. I've been in, in addictions for so longer than they've been alive, is my thought process, because I didn't know. And I promised her just to get her out of my house that I would go see this Teen Challenge Choir. And so I went and I was nodding off and I was sweating profusely and my mom's crying because she just wants, she's rubbing my soaking wet back in this church, in the back of this church in Woodstock, Ontario. And she just wanted me to hear these testimonies of these people that were mm -hmm. victorious and free. Free, you know, yeah, free uh, from their addictions and, and on a better path. And, and I, I wasn't in good shape and afterwards, Marty and John, two choir members in the choir, came up and spoke with me, and I'm thinking, oh, great, you know, one of these guys. It was amazing that Marty and John's story, the life around being a biker and a drug dealer and guns and all of this, their lives mirrored mine, where I was. And I'm looking at these two men going, these guys look great. I'm sitting there sweating and you know, <laughs> not in good shape at all. And they said, can we pray with you? I said, I, I haven't believed in God in a long time. I said, if you want to pray for me, that's fine. I'm not going to pray with you. And they did. A couple months later in December of 06, I went for a tour of the Teen Challenge Farm in London, Ontario. And Marty and John came running up through that, through that uh, tour. And they're like, Steve, 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 we've been praying for you every day, brother. Are you coming into the program? And in my head, I was still prideful. Uh, in that moment, though, the moment that changed my attitude about, okay, I'm going to try this program was, wasn't the fact that Marty and John prayed for me every day, because that's what Christians do, pray. Right. It was the fact that they remembered my name. People back in the house I used to have that was a crack house never knew my name. They knew me as Graveyard. They didn't even know my name was Steve, and it's a very common name. But Marty and John remembered my name, and that meant everything to me. On uh, May, uh, I, I, I went home after that. I should, I should include this part because it's one of the darkest moments of my life was I, I went home. I was on the waiting list for Teen Challenge. I relapsed over Christmas. And on January 4th, 2007, my mom had to come and pull me out of a place where I'd been smoking crack and shooting up for about three days straight. She was very angry and she said, get your jacket on. We've got to go to the hospital. Your granddaughter's been born. And mm -hmm. I want to tell you, you know, walking into that hospital room and looking at both of my daughters and the disappointment in their faces, the anger on their mother's face and, and, and this beautiful little baby in a bassinet, you think there's the moment, boom, there's the kick in the pants you need to get yourself clean. On my granddaughter's birthday, I wanted to die more than ever before mm. because I felt so hopeless. I had tried to get sober. I couldn't do it, you know, and, and I wanted to die. I just wanted the world to stop and just let me get off. And it took many months later, and I wish I had time to get into every God moment, but we don't. But on May 17th of 2007, I entered the Teen Challenge program, a very angry, bitter, and broken man. The first sermon I heard in Teen Challenge was, God will reimburse you for your lost years mm. with interest. Reimburse. Reimburse. With interest. Yeah. So explain to uh, our viewers a little bit what that really looks like you know we all have a different um bottom mm -hmm. as they say in the addiction world yeah. uh, we all have a different place where we get to some of us have to lose everything yeah. some of us uh lose a few things mm -hmm. uh there's people we all are, are uniquely made in the image of god but we're also all have a unique uh redemption story and that freedom story so when you say that you were reimbursed uh, just explain a little bit what that means, what that looks like for you in your life today. Yeah. Well, everything didn't just snap and come overnight. 
I mean, I had to walk out this new faith. I, had, I enter this program, I'm hearing this sermon, I'm seeing this joy in all these other men's lives. And I come from a Christian background, so I knew that, you know, they really believed in this God that I no longer believed in. When I finally submitted, and submission in the attic world sounds like defeat, and it's not. Right. It's not. It's not defeat. It's freedom. It's, it's freedom. Yeah. And so submitting my life to Christ and saying, okay, God, if you're real, watch out when you say that. Okay, God, if you're real. And when I found the freedom of forgiveness, to forgive others, to forgive myself, uh, you know, and accept forgiveness, the hardest for any addict is to forgive themselves for mm -hmm. the things they've done. Uh, but to, to walk out that journey uh, uh, in freedom and forgiveness and freedom in Christ, those reimbursements started happening. And um, I, I'm proud to say that I, I'm a graduate from Bible college. I have a bachelor's degree in youth ministry and counseling. I'm a trained addictions counselor. I met my wife at Bible college. We have two beautiful little boys. I, uh, some of the other things is I was able to pray with my, my dad. I was able mm -hmm. to pray hey, with hey, my man, dad. Man. My mom's been married to her, her husband for, for 30 years. We finally hugged for the first time. Over 30 years this man's been in my life and we'd never had that, that kind of emotional connectedness mm -hmm. up until recently actually, which is awesome though. But I really, you know, like it, it, it's just been a, a, a journey of ups and downs for me in my life that it took a long time to earn his respect and I finally got there. God moved uh, in my daughter's life, my younger daughter, mm -hmm. uh, Kayleen. She did the Alpha program with me and she oh, came an awesome to know program. the Lord there. Uh, my former son-in-law who's raising my two grandkids right now, they all follow the Lord. And so it, it's just reimbursement after reimbursement. God moves me and my wife, Rachel, up here to the Ottawa Valley. We now have a beautiful little home on Wilbur Lake. And it's just more than what we asked for when but, we went to God. And it's the promise of the Lord, right? That I will restore that yes. which the locusts have eaten and multiply that. Yes. If you walk in freedom with me. Yeah. And that's what the scripture of that sermon was based on, was what the locust had taken in Joel. Is that right? Awesome. Yeah. And that's what the whole sermon was based And I'm like, could this be real? And where I am today, if you just said to me 13 years ago, Steve, you're going to get to travel the country and do ministry work with an awesome organization. And, and you know, the, the story, your story that God has written for me, he writes our testimonies. Mm -hmm. And you know, he has given me the opportunity to do much more than I ever dreamt of or thought of. Mm. Does that mean the journey's easy? Absolutely not. Right. But relying on him and being able to walk in, in that freedom uh, with sobriety, looking at life through sober eyes was so different to me mm. back then. But God has been so faithful. Even in the valleys, he's always been there. His always. providence is amazing. You know, and that's uh, one of the things that's so amazing about our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We have the a God that comes to us. Mm -hmm. He seeks us out wherever we are. Yeah. You know, when we're in the crack house, when mm -hmm. we're uh, in, in stuck in pornography, whatever our addiction might be, yeah. He will come and He will find us there mm -hmm. if we accept Him into our lives and, and we reach out for that help. Yeah. So He's such a great God in that way. And uh, your story is very encouraging. And, and as I said, uh, I, I know that there's a whole bunch more to it. Mm -hmm. And I know some of it. Uh, and I do encourage anybody who might get a chance to see see speak to do so. Uh, because his story is really going to lift you up and show us all that, that regardless of where we are in life, uh, we have the opportunity to walk in freedom. Um, Steve, you know, we uh, at the Freedom Project here, we like to... We'd like to uh, make an appeal to our viewers. Um, is there any uh, life scripture or is there any uh, message that you would like to uh, leave our viewers with today that will explain to them a little bit about how you walk in freedom and, and how they have an opportunity to? Well, my, my go-to scripture is 1 Peter three fifteen and 16, and that is uh, sanctify Christ as Lord in your life and be ready at all times to answer anyone's questions or accusations mm -hmm. about the hope that you have and to do it with gentleness and reverence you know and that's that's what i believe in just going out there and 
telling people what the Lord's done in my life. And I just want to encourage anyone out there who's struggling in addiction, never give up. Never give up. For you who might have a loved one, a daughter or a son out there struggling in addiction, never give up. And you know, I was my mother's test of faith for 20 years. Mm -hmm. So when you, you want to talk to someone, talk to my mom, because that woman prayed for me every day for 20 years, and she never gave up. So, yeah. Amen to that. And that's a, a whole other message in itself, the power of prayer, and how that prayer can take us into freedom. Mm -hmm. um, is there anything else that you'd like to just share before we start wrapping up here today? I, I you know, I just, uh, being with Teen Challenge, you know, uh, please reach out. Reach out to Joe or reach out to myself, but you know, uh, go to www.teenchallenge.ca. Check out uh, our organization and what we can do for you or for your loved ones. And uh, you know, God built this ministry on prayer. So, you know, we're gonna be praying for you out there and please, for you believers, continue to lift up Joe and his ministry and for our ministry of Teen Challenge. Amen to that. Well, you've been talking to Steve Prendergast here in uh, Vanier at the Freedom Project. You know, there are so many things that we can tell you about freedom, but the, the thing that you really need to understand about freedom is that it is available to you. It's there in our Bible. Uh, you just need to call out to the Lord. There's no big uh, uh, ritual. There's no big ceremony involved. Find yourself a quiet spot or driving on the car or walking in the bush and just invite him into your life. We don't have to walk in the bondage of the world. We can be free in the Lord. And he lifts us up out of that mire that we can find ourselves in and he will take us to a place of freedom. And as Steve has mentioned to us, that doesn't mean necessarily our lives are gonna be smooth every day. It means that we're gonna walk through the, the, the issues that come into our lives with the Lord. The Bible says he's the shadow at my right hand. He goes with me. He sought me out in those lowly places when I was broken and he lifted me up and he put me on a path to freedom. And we can all journey that path together. So thanks so much for coming and, and viewing our uh, podcast today. We are the Freedom Project. Thank you for your comments. Keep sending them in. If you liked the show today, let us know. Uh, if you think that uh, there's someone in your world that could benefit from watching and learning about freedom in Christ, just please have them uh, tune in and follow us. Uh, we're here all the time and uh, we're just happy to hear from you. So once again, let's all go and walk on a journey in freedom. And please remember John 8, 36. If the sun sets you free, you will be free indeed. I'm Joe Weber. Thanks for joining us today. God bless you and walk in freedom.